is up guys I'm back with another video looking at neurofibromatosis type 1 and 2 and then a short little ending just uh, talking about McCune Albright syndrome because it kind of relates to the two in a, in a little bit in a couple ways so let's get right into this I've kind of I've pre typed up this little chart table here to set up kind of some of the similarities and differences between NF1 and NF2 but before we get into that I want to get into the introductory kind of genetics of each of them because they could ask a question relating to the uh, which chromosome these specific genes are on and whatnot so basically I use the words themselves to kind of guide me on a lot of the symptoms of each of these so uh, to begin, let's look at what chromosome each of these uh, genes are on. So basically the gene names is just what the disease letters kind of stand for. For example, neurofibromatosis 1 is just going to is just the NF1 gene. So this is the NF1 gene. And when you look at this, it has already the number 1. So that's going to help guide you so that the first it's on chromosome one to begin with and then notice how one also looks like the number seven so I would say this is on chromosome 17 and F1 gene on chromosome one because it's part of it and one kinda looks like the number seven so chromosome 17 then when we move over here to NF2 this one's even easier so this is the number two one two so let's use the number two two times so this is NF2 gene NF2 gene on chromosome 22, right? We just took the number 2 and did it and used it twice. So chromosome 22. So that care takes care of kind of the important genetics that maybe they could ask you about relating to these two. And now let's get into kind of uh, the actual diseases. So the mnemonic that I've developed to kind of to kind of get to a lot of the symptoms is using again NF1 and NF2. So let's write out NF1. NF1. Do you notice that the number one, whether it's here or here, doesn't matter which way you look at it, it looks like a lowercase l. So that's going to help us guide us in our mnemonic. We're going to use N, F, and L. Okay, so N's going to stand for neurofibromas. Neurofibromas. These are just cutaneous, uh, these are specifically cutaneous here. These are just uh, benign. Fibro neurofibromas that are within the skin. So basically they are nerve sheath tumors that are benign that grow all over your skin. They're called neurofibromas. So that N told us that there's neurofibromas. And not only that, the disease name tells you that there's going to be neurofibromas. But specifically in NF1, this is cutaneous neurofibromas. So these are on the skin. Okay, so next, so that covers N. Now let's let's look at what the letter F will stand for. So in NF1, F is going to stand for freckles. Okay, so kind of one of the, the things that you'll see in neurofibromatosis type 1 is freckles, specifically in the axillary and inguinal region. Okay, so that'll be, they'll have freckles there along with these neurofibromas all over their skin. Okay, so that takes care of the letter F, and then the last one is L. Now this one has a couple things that you have to use for it to stand for. So L, because let lowercase l looks like the number 1, that's how we're able to derive this. And this is going to be L4 Lish nodules. Now Lish nodules are on the iris of the eye. And this is just a hematroma. Um, you'll see these little darkened spots, kind of like, almost like little freckles that are around the iris. Now, don't get this confused because it's kind of hyperpigmented and it can look similar to how what you would see in um, Wilson's as well. as But in Wilson's, though, you have more of a ring, remember, in the copper disease. And um, in uh, Lish nodules, these are more kind of freckled around the iris, okay? So don't mix that up. So Lish nodules, so that's our first L. Then the next L is going to be moving into, so there's something called an optic pathway glioma. Okay, optic pathway. Basically, it's a tumor that is going to develop around the optic nerve and can uh, actually cause vision problems. It can be unilateral or bilateral, but usually uh, unilateral causing unilateral uh, vision loss, excuse me, let me emphasize that. So you may be thinking, well that doesn't start with an L, so the way I do it is I just say it's a light pathway glioma. 
because clearly light goes into the eye and light is needed to kind of send to basically is used in the vision pathway. So I, th I just pronounce it as a light pathway glioma. Okay, so that's our other L. And then the last L for this one is going to be, now remember, it's probably what everybody can recognize this NF1 uh, disease as is with cafe lay spots, right? And so I just basically look and I just kind of pronounce it as uh, lay spots, the L in lay. So I kind of ignore this other part as far as uh, in the mnemonic and I just remember the L. So we have three L's here, the light pathway glioma, the lay spots. Remember the cafe au lait spots, what are they? Well, they're basically birthmarks that are flattened and basically flattened to the skin. They're just flattened skin birthmarks. So they're kind of colored as if they're like almost like a coffee color. And that's where the name comes from, cafe au lait spots. Okay, and then we have the light pathway glioma and then the Lish nodules, the Lish nodules. So you have to, that's something you're going to have to kind of remember. Lish nodules is referring to these little um, hyperpigmented areas. They're, he, they're actually hematromas um, on the iris, okay, and don't mix them up with the copper disease that we talked about. Okay, so that covers our um, mnemonic for uh, for basically looking at NF1 and you have everything you need. NF, just look at the one as an L. NF and then L and you can get all the symptoms that it goes with. So basically, if you had to look at an overview between NF1 and NF2, NF1 is going to be the one that's involving skin. NF2 is going to be the one that is involving more brain stuff. Okay, so that's kind of the overview of it. Now, that's not always true because remember, there's a optic um, glioma in NF1, which is clearly involving uh, within the central nervous system uh, around up in the brain. But then again, overall, you'll see skin manifestations in NF1 and not in NF2. Okay, so let's move to NF2. For NF2, this one will take a little bit more of a remembering stuff, but it will help you to look at use the number 2 again, just like we did in the NF2 gene and chromosome 22. So for neural fibromatosis 2, we're going to just think that everything that this is involving is going to be two times of it, basically. So it's going to be something that has two of it, or it's bilateral, or something like that. So for neural fibromatosis 2, we're dealing with bilateral swanomas. If you don't remember about a swanoma, swanoma is a tumor of the, um, the swan cells, and this is also pronounced, you could also call it an acoustic neuroma. The reason is because it affects cranial nerve 8, um, and so it's going to be messing with your hearing. So it's bilateral, so you're going to have bilateral hearing problems. Bilateral hearing problems, you're going to have tinnitus, you're going to have vertigo, all of these kind of symptoms. And it's very important that you remember bilateral because that distinguishes it from a lot of, uh, uh, of other things that can cause a unilateral type of uh, hearing loss. Whereas this is bilateral swanomas, okay? Because just a swanoma by itself is, I think it's 90% of the time is going to be unilateral. So when you see a bilateral swanomas in a patient, you need to really be thinking of NF2. So that's the first one, bilateral swanomas. The next one is going to be bilateral cataracts. Now I want to emphasize here, in this situation, I'm more or less saying that the cataracts can be, um, basically it can be bilateral. So I'm more or less saying in here, the two times part of the mnemonic is really saying that because we have two eyes, so you're, you can have cataracts in both of the eyes, but you can also have a cataract in one of the eyes in this situation. The bilateral is really important more or less in swanomas. So you can have bi you're going to have bilateral swanomas, cataracts, and then you're also going to have um, meningiomas. So let me remind you, for meningiomas, this is a very common type of uh, primary uh, brain tumor, and it's uh, very benign, so it's usually not dangerous at all. They can usually fix this. And then ependymoma, the ependymomas, you can also, you're also going to see these in this as well. So you see all these different types of tumors. And let me remind you, for ependymoma, if they wanted to really make the question hard, they could try to describe the symptoms more or less that would be associated with a lot of these. For example, remember with meningioma, although they're very benign, they could say mention something about somoma bodies. 
And somoma bodies, we know, uh, is one of the things that's related to a possible uh, meningioma. They could describe it as seeing somoma bodies on histology. What about for ependymoma? Remember that ependymoma is known to block the fourth ventricle. It loves to sit in the fourth ventricle. So what, what, what does that mean? Well, when you go through the lateral ventricles and then enter the third and then the fourth in the brain, if you have cerebrospinal fluid fl flowing through here, right, and this is the lateral ones, this is the third, and this is the fourth. If you're blocking from the fourth, that means that this will be enlarged, this will be enlarged, this will be enlarged, and this will be smaller because cerebral, because cerebral spinal fluid is getting backed up into these areas. So they can describe a situation of um, increased intracranial pressure, and um, they could tell you that you have an enlarged third, a later, the two of the two lateral ventricles and the third ventricle. Uh, instead of just telling you, oh, the patient has meningiomas. Okay, and I also didn't mention this. This is kind of important. These are autosomal dominant. That will also help you because they could describe a pa that there's a family history, different, uh, basically, members of their family. Like, let's say, for example, um, their uncle or their grandfather had a meningioma. And then someone else in their family, that's in their close family, had a ependymoma. And then all of a sudden you're noticing that all of these tumors that are within this thing, and all of these symptoms, schwannoma, meningioma, ependymoma, and then cataracts, have all in the pre are all in this family, all over in this family's uh, genetic inheritance. So that will also help you to cue you in when you see a family history of all of these things. Okay, so let's go over again, just an overview one more time, neurofibromatosis 1, NF1, just looks just like, the 1 looks like a lowercase l, and remember the N is for neurofibromas, the F is for freckles, specifically in the axillary and inguinal region, the L is for Lisch nodules, light pathway glioma, that's a way to remember optic pathway glioma, that can also cause vision problems, so don't rely on don't lean too much on cataracts being able to cause uh, blindness or vision problems because remember that in neurofibromatosis 1, you, ha you have the possibility of this optic pathway glioma and that can also cause vision problems. So don't rely on vision problems as a way to distinguish between these two. Notice that they're different in their presentation. Cataracts is specific to NF2 whereas in NF1 it's optic pathway glioma. Okay, and then the last L is going to be for the lay spots. Remember, it's caffeine lay, uh, that, and that's just a birthmark that is flattened to the skin. Uh, so that that's that's basically a fancy way of saying that. Okay, and then we get to NF2, and NF2 we're going to use the two. So literally everything for the two. We have the NF2 gene. We have chromosome 22. We just took the two and used it twice. 22. Everything is uh, two times. You have bilateral swanoma, so that's to bo both sides of the a brain can have the swanomas. And those are, remember another name for that is acoustic neuroma, so you can have these bilateral hearing problems. You can have tinnitus, um, bilateral sensory neural deafness, and all these kind of things that you can notice on physical exam. The eyes, you're going to have cataracts. Remember, we have two eyes. Uh, meningiomas can be all bilaterally across the brain and these are a histology you remember this is uh, somoma bodies but these are fairly benign and then ependymomas you can have these all over the brain as well and um, the fourth ventricle it's known to sit in the fourth ventricle though specifically it also can sit in the cauda equina but they're primarily asked about fourth ventricle and this can cause an increase in intracranial pressure and you will see a dilated so let me go back right here a dilated third ventricle and the two laterals so remember the order of the ventricles it's lateral the two lateral then it goes into the third and the fourth ventricle and then to be able to disperse to the around to the rest of the parts of the brain and then down to the spinal cord okay so that covers nf1 and nf2 now let's talk about quickly mccune albright now i think i'm going to do another video on this alone because i don't i don't want to cover all of the sort of the pathogenesis and some of the other details about it but i want to simply say that mccune albright is it also has cafe LA spots, just like NF1 uh, does, cafe LA spots, and those are just flattened birthmarks that you'll have multiple of these. I want to emphasize that. If you just see like one birth birthmark spot, right? I mean, I don't want you to jump on, oh, the patient has NF1, but if you see all the other symptoms, then begin to think about it. So in McCune Albright syndrome, you have cafe LA spots mixed with, and this is the easiest way to remember it, endocrine problems. It's as simple as that. The reason I'm saying that is because any resource you read about with McCune Albright, they'll have cafe LA spots, and it'll say, oh, but they have a possibility for Cushing's, um, pituitary problems, adrenal problems like precocious puberty, so, and, and, and the list goes on and on. 
all of these things are related to endocrine issues. So, and it varies from patient to patient. So don't memorize each and every little thing because some could be absent, some could not be there, some could, or maybe all of them could be there. It's better to just realize that if you have cafe au lait spots with endocrine abnormalities, a lot of endocrine issues, Cushing's disease, you know how Cushing's presents, um, pituitary issues. Think of all the things that could go wrong if you have a pituitary tumor. You could have the prolactin problems and then the gynecomastia and the fertility issues. Think of all the stuff that could happen if you had a tumor in the adrenal gland, right? You could have precocious puberty. Or what if you had a, a adrenal gland in the medulla? Then you could start to have pheochromocytoma symptoms. So I want you to just link together. Cafe au lait spots plus endocrine problems, you need to be thinking of McCune albright okay? And we'll save some of the other details of that uh, pathology or that little syndrome for another video. But I hope this video helped, guys. If it did in any sort of way, please like the video, um, share, leave a comment letting me know what you liked or didn't like. I'm always listening to feedback and trying to respond to all the messages I get. And I will see you in another video. Bye, guys.